Hi everybody, I'm Dave from the Polypad team and in this video I'm going to talk about three ways to use drop zones to validate student work. So the three methods are match, compare, and cover. This first example I'm going to show you is match. I'm going to give you a quick demo of each example and then show you how to author these activities for students. So in this match example, I'm going to place the quadrilateral here and the triangle over here. And I'll put this one with uh, the, penta the hexagon and this one with the pentagon. And you'll see when I check, I got them all correct. All right, awesome. If I hit the reset button and I move a couple of them around, if I put uh, this one over here like this and the quadrilateral here and the triangle here, when I check it, I get feedback that they're all wrong. So I could move those around, see if that did it, and then click check again. And now I can see that I have two correct uh, and so on. So I'll, I'll stop there, but that's the match uh, validation type. I'm going to put all the links to these polypads in the chat. Let me now go to compare validation. Here, I want to use these fraction bars to build a value of two and two thirds. So let me do one hole and two holes and a third. Let's see, check. Nope, that's only two and a third, right? I need two and two thirds. Let me build my other third with six. And now I check it. Ah, oh, I got that right. Awesome. Uh, of course, I could have built it in lots of different ways. Instead of a third here, I could take some twelfth. I'm going to use the C button on my keyboard to make some copies. Maybe instead of this half, I want to do some fourths. So let's see how I did there. Check. Awesome. I got it right. So here, as long as the value of what's in this box is equal to two and two thirds, it'll mark it correct. And if it's not equal to two and two thirds, I'll get this feedback that it's wrong. Again, I can hit the reset button to start over if I want. So that's compare validation, where I'm comparing the value in this, in this drop zone to something that the student is doing. And the third option is cover validation, where you have to cover the area of, uh, with shapes that are, are, are given to the students. So I might put the hexagon there and then the triangle here. If I check it right now, not fully covered yet, but when I do it here, yeah, I get it correct. Uh, I can hit reset, and I want to show you that it will validate lots of different correct solutions. Uh, maybe I'll do something like this, which is kind of an interesting way to think about this shape. Check it. Yeah, I got that right as well. If I move one out and check it, I get it wrong. On all of these examples, it is providing validation when I click the check button, which I'll show you how to author that in a moment. I also want to show you, you could just have it automatically show validation to students. So I'm going to not save my changes here. On this one, uh, as soon as I put a tile in there, it's uh, not giving feedback because I forgot to change it in authoring mode. So this is a good time to show you how to do that. So now uh, I'm going to go to the File tab and I'm going to turn on authoring mode. I'll show you how to do this from scratch in a moment. And I'm going to go into authoring mode. Let me actually move these tiles back out. So in authoring mode, I first want to hit delete on this check button. So I'm going to hit delete. And now I'm going to go to the drop zone. And I'm going to go to the more tools menu. And I'm going to turn on this auto check toggle. You can see auto check is currently off because I wanted you to click the check button. But now I'm going to turn on this toggle of auto check. I'll leave authoring mode. And now you can see, as soon as I let go of a tile in the drop zone, I get this feedback. So it's still incorrect. Uh, I don't need to be told it's incorrect right now. I, I, I know I'm not done yet. Uh, so that's why I prefer having the check button. But you'll see now when I do it, I get it correct. Uh, and as soon as I move a tile, it's telling me that it is, is incorrect. So that auto check is an option as well. All right, I showed you a little bit behind the scenes in authoring mode. Let's do a deep dive here from scratch. So I'm going to go uh, to my library where I was looking at these examples. You can see I have a lot of polypads in my library. I was just searching by validation, so I would only see the ones I wanted to share in this video. But I'm going to use this new polypad button to start with a blank polypad. And I don't want to save my changes here, so I'll hit, hit discard. Uh, so blank polypad. And to start this, you need to go into authoring mode. There is a, um, 
a button here to learn more about all the features in, in authoring mode, including a whole section on validation. So I'll put a link to that in the, in the video as well. I'm going to turn on authoring mode. And the first thing that I need to do is get a drop zone onto the canvas. So I'm going to go back to the tile menu. And the last section called authoring tools only appears when authoring mode is on. So just to show that again, if I leave authoring mode, you can see the last section is games and applications. But when I go back to authoring mode, now there's the section called authoring tools. And here is a drop zone. So all of those examples that I showed you were validated by putting tiles into the drop zone. And so you need to actively turn on validation. Sometimes you might not want validation on a drop zone. So I'll go to the More Tool menu, and you can see there's a drop down called Validation. And here's Compare, Cover, and Match. So I'm going to make this, I'll start with Compare. And you can see now the action bar changes pretty significantly when I change validation to Compare. And so I first need to decide what I want the tiles in the drop zone to be compared to. Do I want it to be the number of tiles, the sum, the product, the mean, et cetera? A lot of options. In the example that I shared with you, it was a sum of two and two thirds. But let's just do the count of the tiles. And I want to know if I could have it equal to a certain amount of tiles, less than, greater than, et cetera. I'm going to do, let's, uh, let's do less than four tiles. So this will be marked correct if there are less than four tiles in the drop zone. Now, before I can validate it, I need to make a, a check button that we saw. So I'm going to go to the drop zone. And also under the authoring section, I'm going to close tile options. And I'm going to open authoring. And you can see one of the choices here is this action button. So I'm going to click the action button. It adds a button to the canvas. And I need to choose from this drop down menu what I want this button to do. Again, you can go click on Learn More in Authoring Mode to learn all about buttons. But for right now, I just want to validate. So I'm going to choose Validate. Uh, I can double click in here to change the words to check it or something. And now, if I go out of Authoring Mode, remember this was less than four tiles. I would certainly add instructions to the screen, but I just want to show you that. If I drag in some tiles, there's one. Let me put in some number tiles. We can do a number bar. So this is three tiles. If I hit check, I get it correct because it was less than four. If I do a fourth tile, now it's wrong because it's not less than four. Even a fifth one will be wrong. Uh, but now if I take a couple of them out, as long as it is less than four tiles, I'm going to get that correct. Wonderful. Uh, let me go back into authoring mode. Again, this is the compare, right? I'm in tile options. Let me close this. I'm in compare validation. So that's, uh, you can compare it to all sorts of things, right? Count, et cetera. So I could change this to whatever I want, uh, change it if I want equal to, less than or equal to, and then some sort of, of numeric input here. All right, let's go to the other types of validation. Let me delete all these tiles. Uh, now, let's do, what's the next one on the list? Let's do cover. So in cover, that was the example where I had a shape that I needed to cover in, in lots of different ways. So let me cover, let me make a, a different one. I'm going to do, um, let's just do two hexagons. So now I'm in authoring mode. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, give myself a little more room here, and zoom in a bit so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, let me zoom in. There we go. Now, when I click on uh, on the drop zone, actually, I'm going to make this even smaller so we can see it a little bit better. Right there, we go. That's a good size for the hexagons. All right, and I'll move this over and zoom in a bit. Now, when I click on the drop zone, uh, you can see one of the options in the action bar is set solution. I even get this warning that says no solution has been set for this drop zone. So unlike uh, compare, where I, I entered in the drop zone count of less than or equal to four, now I put the tiles in place that I want students to cover. I click on the drop zone. I click set solution. And you can see this changes to a check mark right now. And when I move my tiles out of the way, I get this gray tile that's left. So uh, I can delete these. 
I go out of authoring mode. This gray tile is locked. That's what students have to cover. So if I drag in a few trapezoids and rotate it around, whoop, and then the hexagon, I check it. It's not correct yet. But when I drag in this hexagon, I get it correct. Awesome. Now, if I delete these, let me delete these. I could, in authoring mode, if I want to change this color, let's say I want to make it from this gray to a light blue or something, that is a locked tile, but you can edit the color of it inside of authoring mode. So even if I do that, uh, I can see that that is validated as a correct solution. Cool. Now, uh, last thing to show about this mode, if I want to change the, uh, the correct solution, I go back into authoring mode, and you can see one of the options is clear solution. I can click show solution. If, if I had made that, um, that blue tile invisible, if I had just gotten it out of the way, uh, I could click show solution to see that again if I'd forgotten what the solution was as an author. Uh, but here I can do clear solution, and now I'm back to where I started. All right. So that is, um, that is the second validation mode. That is cover. Let me now show you match. So match validation is I need students to put in the drop zone what I've set as the solution. Doesn't matter where it is in the drop zone as long as it matches those tiles. Think to that first example where students had to drag in the triangle, quadrilateral, hexagon, and pentagon. So let's say I want them to get a square and a triangle in here. So now it's the same um, interface in the action bar. You can see I'm getting this warning, no solution has been set. So I'll go here, I'll click set solution. I get this check now that's showing me I've set a solution. I'll move those out of the way, go out of authoring mode. Again, I'd add instructions, you know, drag a triangle and a square in here. So if I just do a triangle, that's not it. If I do a triangle and a square, I get it right. If I do two triangles and a square, it's not right. If I do any other tile, even, you know, an algebra tile, um, any tile that is not uh, a triangle and a square, it's going to mark me incorrect. But if I have the triangle and the square, it's marked correct. Awesome. So that is the third validation method of uh, match. Again, if I don't want to click this check button on all of these, I could turn on auto check. Uh, I'm going to hit clear solution again and uh, clear solution. And let me just go to uh, cover validation. There's a few options in cover validation. You could add some tolerance if you want students to be marked correct. Even if they're a little bit off, you could change the tolerance level from 0 to 100. And you can turn on a toggle of check translations if they have the right shape, but it's in the wrong spot. That, that will also be marked correct. And again, you can learn more, uh, learn a lot more about this by clicking this learn more button right here. And this is going to take you to the beginning of a tutorial of authoring mode. And then if you want a really deep dive of documentation, you can click this link right here. And that's going to take you to our full page on authoring mode. Here's a section on action buttons, which I had talked about. If you want to learn more about just how to use the action buttons, you can click that. But this last link is a really detailed tutorial. Let me scroll down to the bottom on validation. So everything that I've been talking talked about that I've talked about in this video is described in detail in this tutorial mode or tutorial page on validation. So go check that out as well. Finally, all of the validation that I've been doing, I've been doing just on Polypad, but it also works inside of Activity Builder. And inside of Activity Builder, you don't even need to have a check button. You could do all of the validation through computational layer and other components outside of Polypad on Activity Builder. So if you want to learn more about that option, go to polypad.amplify.com, click the Tutorial button, scroll down a bit, and there is a page here about using Polypad inside, to, inside of Activity Builder. So you can click that link uh, and you can learn more. Wonderful. Thanks for checking out this video about validation in Polypad. Would love to see what you create with these tools. So feel free to share it with the Polypad team on any of our, our social media channels. We'd love to see what you create.
Thanks for watching.